In remembrance of the crucifixion, I want to read you something written by Bonnie Wisham. And it's the crucifixion story from Mary, Jesus's mother's perspective. And as I'm reading this to you, think of how she felt. Jesus was not a mythical figure. It was her son. And what that must have felt like to her. Sleep had eluded her that night and she was weary and worn as she stood there at Galatha's Hill, hoping to get a glimpse of him, her son, her firstborn. Her eyes were swollen and heavy from all the tears she had shed and the lack of sleep. Yet she strained all the harder to see him. A multitude of people had gathered, but she didn't notice. They were quiet with anticipation about what was going to take place. Some had looked forward to this day for three years. Now the time was here. Suddenly the crowd began to stir and excitement filled the air. There on the dusty trail, a procession was taking place. The people began to cry out, crucify him, crucify him. As the procession grew nearer, they became louder. Mary saw the Roman soldiers, someone carrying a heavy wooden cross. And then though her eyes could scarcely believe what they saw, she saw him, her baby, her son, Mary's hands flew to her mouth, stifling the screams at what her eyes had just beheld. John, standing nearby, took hold of her, steadying her trembling frame. In spite of the disfigurement on his face, the disheveled look, the blood that trickled down his brow, Mary knew this was her son, and pain tore at her heart like none she's ever known before. As the procession made its way to the top of the hill, the crowd cried out all the more, crucify him, crucify him. Some in the crowd hurled insults at him while others spat at him and wagged their heads as they mocked him. How was it possible, she thought to herself, that one whose heart was filled only with love could withstand this? She watched as the one carrying the cross lowered it to the ground, but her eyes went quickly back to her son as she took in the wounds on his body, the blood trickling from his brow caused by the thorns of the crown that dug into his flesh. She flinched as she took in the gashes on his back, the bruises and the dry blood. Thank God for the man who carried the cross, she whispered to herself. She continued her watch. Her eyes caught sight of the soldiers as they took hold of her son and laid him down on the cross. She could not make herself believe what was about to happen next, but reality set in when the echoes of the hammers hitting the nails that were being driven into the hands and feet of her son, as her heart cried out, never would she be able to block out that sound. This was her child, her baby. When the hammers had at least ceased their pounding, the soldiers raised the cross on which her son was nailed and placed it 
between two other crosses on which there were two thieves. There they would hang until death claimed them. Mary stood and watched as the soldiers gambled for his clothes and faintly heard the murmurings of the crowd. Her main concern was for the one on the center cross, her boy, Jesus. As she stood gazing on his face, her mind wandered back in time, back to the first encounter with the angel of the Lord. It was then she was told of the coming birth of Jesus, how he would be conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit. And she had been chosen by God himself to bring this baby into the world. She remembered the months that followed as the baby grew within her womb, making himself known with every little movement and kick. Her love for him had grown more with every passing day until she thought she couldn't possibly love him any more than she did already. She remembered the trip to Bethlehem with Joseph to pay taxes, how tired and weary they were when they reached their destination. Not only were they tired, but Mary began to experience the pains of labor. As they searched for a place to spend the night, they found every place was filled up. One innkeeper, noticing their plight, offered to let them use his stable for the night and gave them clean hay for a bed and food for their animal. And that night, just when she thought she couldn't love him any more than she already did, there he was, her newborn son. And the love she felt for this little baby was unlike any she had ever known before. As Mary continued to look on the face of her son, a face filled with such anguish and pain, she wondered how the years had gone by so quickly. Those wonderful years as Jesus grew from an infant to a young boy, following behind Joseph in his carpenter's shop. Mary remembered the toothless grin on his face the day he came home from fishing with a tiny fish on his line. And oh, how sweet it felt when he wrapped those little arms around her neck to comfort her when she was down and out. No amount of money, no worldly possessions, not even death could take those precious memories from her. But now she was so frightened for him. Not since she and Joseph thought they had lost him when returning from the Passover in Jerusalem had she been this afraid. They found him safe then discussing scriptures with the priests and didn't know whether to be angry with him or just be thankful they had found him. He was smart one and Mary was so proud of him. Nevertheless, he deserved a good scolding for scaring them so and Mary had done just that even though her heart had not been into it. Though she hadn't really understood what his reply meant. Don't you know, I must be about my father's business? Was all of this part of the business? Then all too soon, those precious childhood years had passed with its scrapes, cuts, bruises, tears, and his dirty little face. As a young boy, that was so endearing to Mary. And Jesus stood there, a young man, ready and determined to go about his father's business. He embarked on a journey that took him far from home and family. When he made his intentions known to Mary, she was sad that he was leaving, but so very proud of the fact that he had grown up into such a fine young man. And so she hugged him and kissed him goodbye wishing him the blessings of God. But deep within her beings, there was this churning, this uneasy feeling in the pit of her stomach 
as she watched him leave. She wanted to protect him, but knew she couldn't. And as the days and months went by, Mary kept her ears open for any bit of news of her son and cherished every bit that came her way. However, along with the good news, sometimes there was bad news. There was news of how he had chosen 12 men to travel with and work with, news of the multiples, healings, that were taking place and the many people that were following him and being restored to good health. But there was also news of how others despised him and wanting his teachings to stop. Though Mary was concerned for the safety of her son, she knew in her heart that he was in the hands of his heavenly father and prayed that God's will be done. Never in her wildest dreams did she think the end would turn out like this. Her son, who had never done harm to anyone, whose heart was filled with love and compassion for all people, now beaten, bruised, marred beyond recognition, and nailed to a cross, though he had a sinless life. His time had been spent teaching scriptures, healing the sick, giving sight back to the blind, hearing back to the deaf, healing the lame, and even raising the dead. Now here he was, put to shame by those who had chosen to believe that he was not the Son of God. He was betrayed by one disciple, denied by another, and the others had scattered at the time of his arrest except for John, who was standing by her side. She wondered if they were the same ones who really loved Jesus. Did they? Why weren't they here to stand with him? Had all that Jesus had done been in vain? She wondered. Her gaze drifted from the anguished face of her son and caught hold of his chest, rising and falling with each breath he took. God, she prayed, how much longer must he suffer this humiliation and pain? If this has to be, please end his suffering soon. At some point in time, she wasn't sure just when she recalled him saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. She also remembered him looking at John and saying, John, behold your mother. Then he had also said to her, Mother, behold your son. Such love, even in anguish and pain, and realizing the end was near, still he thought of making provisions for those he loved. Mary began to experience more pain, even as she realized what was going on. When he cried out from the cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It was though a spear had been plunged into her own heart. Then she remembered the words spoken to her by Simeon when she and Joseph had taken the baby Jesus to be circumcised. Yea, a sword shall pass through thy own soul also. Could this be what Simeon was talking about? Soon, God, soon, she prayed, let this torture be over soon and let my son be at rest. After what seemed an eternity, a noise was heard from the cross. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. It is finished. Then he hung his head 
and died. And Mary believed in her heart that God had heard and answered her prayer. No long would they speak ill of his name. No more would evil men plot his death. No more beatings or crowns of thorns tearing his flesh. No more pain. No more suffering. It was finished. When word come back, came back that he had died, Mary looked in total disbelief as one of the soldiers raised his spear and plunged it into Jesus' side and water and blood flowed down his body and onto the cross and the ground below him. How could anyone be so callous and so cold-hearted, she wondered to herself. Mary listened as Joseph of Arimathea asked permission to take Jesus's body down from the cross. She noticed how gently he handled the lifeless body. Finally, she's able to go to her boy and wipe away the blood, sweat, and tears from his brow and face. If only she had something with which she should comb his hair that was matted with sweat and dry blood. She takes his head in her arms and rocks him back and forth, just as she had done when he was a child. This was her son, the man she raised, the baby and the man that she loved. As Jesus took, as Joseph took the linen cloth from Nicodemus to wrap the body, Mary whispered, oh, please let them start at his feet so that I may look upon his face for a little longer. She wanted to remember every detail that was so dear to her. As Mary walked away from the tomb, her heart was heavy. Her body bent with grief. Her son was dead and she couldn't make sense of it all. It's over, she says to herself. He's gone. My boy is dead. I don't understand why. The angel said he would be king of kings and the savior of our people. But how can that be now? He's gone. And what hope is there now? How can I ever fill this hole that has been left in my heart? Poor Joseph, how he loved the boy. He was so proud of every little accomplishment he made as he worked alongside him in his carpentry shop. Thank God he wasn't here to witness this awful thing they did to our boy Jesus. Mary and the others still had not fully understood what Jesus had tried to teach them about his death, but how he would rise out of death's sleep on the third day. Their hearts were filled with hopelessness and despair. They didn't understand. If only they had known this was not the end, but just the beginning. The beginning of a life of hope and promise in a world with no end. If only they had known the rest of the story. And you know the rest of the story. You know how it goes. But this is a day to remember not only the peace and love that Jesus taught us, but left with us, but also the pain of his mother as she stood there and could do nothing for her child. And so on this day, there is happiness as we look forward to the resurrection, but there's pain from the man who hung on the cross with the nails piercing his hands and from the mother who watched her son die and could do nothing.
God bless you all.